Hello Internet, Craig Chamberlain here with CraigTheTechTeacher.com and we are going through this book, Windows 8.1, The Missing Manual. And you're joining me in this nice little adventure to learn everything you need to know about the Windows 8 operating system. To see all the videos in this series, check out the video description below. And if you're not yet a patron, make sure you consider becoming one. Patrons help keep the show going, growing, and you get VIP access to me. All kinds of great stuff. So check that out in the link below as well. Top patrons for this month are Jacob Williams with Wild Academy at wildacademy.com. Check him out for Ruby tutorials as well as a lot of other interesting things. Uh, also, Brooke Quimby with ashleybeigephotography.com for some really awesome photography and also a very unique professionally done photography. And finally, Precision Electric, which is where I'm doing this recording. Thank you, Precision Electric at precision-elec.com, where they offer industrial services as well as motor repair, electronics repair, printed circuit board repair, you name it, they do it. That's right. So welcome welcome to the next edition of uh, Windows 8.1, the missing manual. So let's just jump headfirst into this. This is hopefully going to give you guys everything you need to know about Windows 8.1, the basic start menu. Now here, this is basically the screen you're gonna see when you normally log in, and this is the lock screen. Notice that it has your time, as well as the date, and it has this little customize option down here in the bottom left-hand corner, or internet, sorry, not customize, internet option in the bottom left-hand corner. Now if I click on it, it'll just scroll right up, and it'll give you this nice little login screen. If you have multiple users, or if you have password protection, this will come up. If you don't have any of that kind of protection, then you will not see this screen. Obviously, I created a dummy account so you guys could see. Can you guess which one's the dummy? Haha, <laughs> very good one. So I'll go ahead and click that and I'll log in. And I will be greeted with my wonderful Windows 8.1 start screen. Now there's a lot of things, um, a lot of things we can go through on this start screen. And that's basically the, the idea of this video. So I'm going to go over as many tips as I possibly can to familiarize you completely with this tile world, as the book calls it. Because remember, there's two different desktops on the Windows 8 operating system. This is your tile world, as the book calls it. And then if I press the Windows key, we'll go to the traditional desktop. So tile world is where we're going to be at for this video exclusively. And we're going to call this the start screen for tile world. And what it has is it has, um, it has two types of apps, okay? There's two types of apps in your Windows 8 operating system. We discussed it br briefly in, a, in the previous video. And you have apps that launch inside of the tile world, such as Internet Explorer. And then you also have apps that launch in a traditional desktop, such as File Explorer. And so inside the Start menu, you are going to have shortcuts to both. So that's something you need to be aware of. There are two different environments inside of your operating system. To learn more about that, check out the previous video. But uh, let's just go ahead, after we've differentiated between the two, let's check out what else is under the hood here in the Start menu. As you can see, there's not really much to my main Start menu. I haven't added many tiles at all. But if I click on this little arrow down here, it brings me to all of my apps that are currently on my uh, system. And you'll notice something unique about this is that actually if I use my mouse wheel, it scrolls horizontally. People are going to ask, why Microsoft? Well, remember, the touch screen, this is meant to be a touch screen environment. So scrolling left or right is usually a lot more comfortable than up and down. And so that's part of the reason they did this with the tile world. Your mouse wheel is basically simulating a swipe on your, uh, your touchscreen tablet. So this little app, uh, this app section will allow you to use your, your mouse wheel to scroll. Also notice at the bottom you have a horizontal scroll bar to go back and forth. So that's something that's good to know when you're looking at your apps. Now the next thing I wanted to cover is the searching. Probably the single best feature of Windows 7 and Windows 8 is the ability to search for just about anything you can think of. And the search is very intelligent and it's also very uh, uh, it remembers basically what you're doing or what you have done in the past. Um, when you have your start menu up like this, you can start doing a search instantly. So I can start typing in, say, CAL, and it's smart enough to know that I am actually looking up my calculator. Now you'll notice that there are two different calculators that come up. The top one is actually the traditional calculator that opens in, you guessed it, your traditional desktop environment. If I bring the start menu back up and I type in CAL again, then we'll notice I can open up the calculator that's in the 
tile world. See, as we were talking about, it's like two different environments are going on at the same time. Searching is probably something you guys want to just get used to doing. It is hands down the fastest way to use your Windows 8 operating system. It's way quicker than even setting up your own little shortcuts and all that fun stuff. If you want to get to something, type in that, just type in, bring up your start menu and just start typing what you want to do. And I'm telling you guys, most of the time, it's going to come right up at the top of the list. Like I said, it's one of the best kept secrets and best features of the Windows operating system. Now you can do more specific searches. You don't just have to do this. Notice that it, when it came up, it gave me this search to everywhere, but I'm not interested in searching everywhere. Let's say I just want to search for a file I'm looking for. If I hold the Windows key and I press F, notice it changed everywhere to files. If I hold the Windows key and I press Q, it changes it back to everywhere. If I just click this drop down here as well, you can do different searches for different things. You can even search for web images or web videos right there in the search bar. It's really kind of awesome, all of the things you can do right here inside of this search. And I strongly encourage you guys to get really, really good at that. Now, another thing that's extremely unique to this and probably the single most confusing part of Windows 8 is the fact that you can go in and uh, do swipe moves or you have to move your mouse around in order to get certain uh, certain features to appear, including your charms bar, which is a very bizarre name for it. But if you take your mouse to the top left hand corner, this is the first one we're going to talk about. And this is your recently opened applications. Notice that a little icon appeared. If I just click on it, it's just going to open the previously used one and it's going to keep scrolling through all of the ones I've had. Notice Frank Abagnale was there because I was getting a picture for the mock profile I made. So I can go through here and do that. But another thing you can do is, other than click on them, is you can bring your mouse down and it'll actually show all of the currently open uh, tabs. And then I can just click on one of those individually. And then you can go back up there and you can do it again. So this is just really another way of alt tabbing. A third way you can get through this is hold the Windows key and press tab and it'll actually pop up for you automatically. That's pretty much all you need to know about the top left swipe. That's everything there is in that particular screen. Other than that, that's the, the whole top left corner. That's all you need to know. Now the top right is your charms bar. If you bring your mouse all the way up to the top right corner, your charms bar appears on the right hand side. The charms bar has a lot of wonderful options in it. We're gonna cover, uh, we're gonna cover, well, let's go ahead and cover some of them. Obviously we can bring up the search. We can do share, which allows me to share uh, things socially, of course. Um, so I'll, I'll have to actually select an application and share it that way. Uh, and then I also have my start menu, which will just bring up the previous item, as we talked about before. If I go to devices, it'll bring up all of the devices that are currently installed on my computer. We'll learn more about that later. And then if I go to settings, this is actually where your shutdown, your about, your help, your permissions, your rate and review, you can go into network. You can go into your volume, you can change your screen, you can go to notifications, you can change, actually shut down your machine, and you can go to your pop-up keyboard. So it really depends on how you want to do it, um, but uh, there's a lot of things there in the charms bar. Now another shortcut to this charms bar is to hold the window key and press C, and it brings it right up. I prefer the window shortcut keys, guys, over this mouse swipe. It's incredibly inefficient. So if I want to open up the charms bar, I'll say Windows key C. If I want to open up the uh, tab, I'll say Windows key tab. If I want to tab between my applications. These Windows key shortcuts will save you loads and loads of headaches. Now speaking of previous, if I bring my mouse to the bottom left hand corner, there is a little window that appears that actually just brings you to the previous application you are using. And that's pretty much all that does. So if I open up Internet Explorer and then I bring it down here in the corner and I press it, it just brings me back to my previous screen. If I press it again, it brings me back to my previous screen. It's the same thing as just pressing your Windows key. So I'm pressing my Windows key right now and it's toggling back and forth between them. Now that's pretty much it for the actual scrolling through the corners. It's the top left, bottom left, and top right. That's all you have. Uh, and again, there are shortcut keys for all three, which will save you tons of headaches in the future. One more thing we're going to talk about is the app bar. Uh, so if you right click on anything, you get this nice little app bar down here that lets you customize how you want this app bar to be done. And we're going to talk about customization a little bit further uh, down the line. Uh, it's a whole different chapter, a whole different section. Uh, that we're going to talk about. But remember, there is a right click available inside of your 
uh, your your tile world environment that allows you to, to do different things. Uh, it's much different than when you right click on your desktop, which will give you a standard right click menu that gives you more functionality. I'm not a big fan of the right click in the tile world. I much preferred right click uh, in the traditional sense, but there it is. Now let's open up our charms bar and let's look at our shutdown options. If I go to settings, I can click power and I have two different options here. I have shutdown and I have restart. Uh, if I have a different user, uh, sometimes you have the sleep option enabled, sometimes you don't. But shutdown obviously shuts it down in the traditional sense and restart actually just completely restarts your computer and uh, reboots it. Uh, restart will also in many cases install your Windows updates. So uh, that's typically how I'll do it when I'm doing my Windows updates. I'll just do a restart. And finally, we're going to look at the accounts menu, where if I click here the top right hand corner, I can see what my options are for my account. Notice that the other account I set up for Frank Abagnale uh, will allow me to switch to that just by clicking on it. I can also change my account picture, which will also bring up all of my account settings. I can sign out, which will bring me back to the login screen, or I can lock, which will bring me back to the lock screen. Click on the lock screen, and here we have the login again. And I can just click whatever user I want to log in as, and we're done. Okay, so that's all there is to the start menu. That's everything you need to know about the, the basic start man, mail menu concepts. We haven't gotten to customizing it yet, uh, but hopefully this covers a vast majority of what you guys may be interested in uh, for this particular functionality of the Windows 8 operating system. Remember, consider becoming a patron and also make sure you subscribe and stay tuned because there's plenty more of these videos to come and I'm really excited about delving into uh, some of the more in-depth things that you can do with Windows 8. It's a great operating system and also if you're not yet a patron, considering becoming the patron and thank you guys for coming out. I will see you in the next video.